like on the Newfoundland Railway. White tablecloths and napkins? Yes, as a matter of fact, I looked at a picture the other day taken uh, on board one of our uh, dining cars, uh, just back in the 40s sometime, and they had the napkins actually folded like that. My dad used to cook on the train. Yes, as you've told me. Near and dear to my right. heart. Uh, we're going to go to Avondale, where they've got one of the old rail cars converted into a dining car, much as it used uh, was. Uh, and we're going to give people a taste of what dining on the trains was all about. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, anyway, let's taste Let's it. taste this food and see what it's like. Especially since my dad used to be a cook on the railway. That was great. I, oh, I so enjoyed those meals. Anyway, uh, here at the Avondale Railway Station, uh, which, by the way, I passed through many a time when I was a, a little boy, uh, they've recreated the dining car experience. And we're going to show to you now, and you can get a sense of what I felt when I was a little boy all those years ago. Come on. Back in the day of the Newfoundland Railway, dining on this train would have been absolutely opulent. You would have had white tablecloth service with real silverware, and you'd be dining on things like turtle soup for 25 cents, fillet steak and mushrooms for 60 cents, $2 a bottle for champagne, and they even had folks in 1905 on the Newfoundland Railway Budweiser beer for 20 cents a bottle. Well, uh, you can't get Budweiser beer or champagne on this particular train <laughs> these days here in Avondale. But you can certainly get the experience of what it was like to dine on a dining car of the Newfoundland Railway. Now, in my day, there would have been tables on both sides. Isn't that right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, now, of course, they're just on one side here. But uh, there would have been a waiter running up and down, just like this lady here, uh, waiting on tables. And as you approached your table, you'd kind of have to keep your balance because the train would be rocking back and forth. It was all really, really exciting. And of course, you'd hear the rattle of the rail. And uh, as a kid, I always wanted a window seat because I loved to watch the scenery as it whizzed by. And you never, know, you never knew what was going to show up through the window here. Anyway. The food was most important, so uh, I'm going to check out this menu and see. I don't see turtle soup, and uh, I don't see mutton chops, but I have a feeling that Donna Lewis knows what I want anyway. Yes, my darling, I got everything here. Oh, it's just what you ordered. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, that looks so good. Donna, that mashed potato reminds me of the mashed potato I had on the train when I was a kid. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it. So, um, this must be a really uh, interesting experience for you, actually working on a train car. Yes. Is, is it cramped quarters in there? Oh, very cramped. Yeah. Very cramped. It wouldn't do for me to get really swamped. <laughs> <laughs> the train was famous, of course, for taking people uh, away from home and bringing people home. Mm -hmm. In a sense, it brought you and your family home, because mm. you had a restaurant in Wysaga Beach, Ontario, for many years, yes. where you were famous for your down-home cooking and your Jigs dinner. Uh, and you were serving a lot of Newfoundland meals up there, weren't you? Yes, I was. Yes. And everybody loved it. Anyway, and now you're here, and uh, you're enjoying the experience. Yeah. Now you eat, test my meal. Mmm, it's good. <laughs> you know, Steve, it was such a pleasure being back on that old rail car in Avondale. I mean, the days of rail travel and dining on the trains it brings back just, old memories. Oh, it was something yeah. special. We'll never see that era. No, again, no, no, indeed we won't. Anyway, we do have.